Okay, hello everyone, Victor Momo from Excel Moments, and this is a continuation series of the solutions to Excel BI's LinkedIn challenges. And like I've said in previous videos, if you are not following the Excel BI LinkedIn page, you should if you want to boost your Excel formula again. So let's look at the problem we have on hand here. It says, provide a formula to list all words from A2 to A10 where English alphabets appear in alphabetical order. So here in A2 to A10, we have a couple of words. Now, English alphabets are from A to Z. So what we are going to do is you're going to look at each of the words and see if the characters are already in that order. So here you can see there's an A, there's a C, that's fine. You know, there's an R, it comes after C, that's fine. But you now have O. O doesn't come after R in the English dictionary. It comes before, right? So this isn't going to pass the test. So basically, our logic is to break each word down into the characters you know sort that in alphabetical order and if the sorted order is the same as the original order then we know that that word qualifies if not it doesn't so that's the logic we are going to execute but before we go into that if you subscribe to my channel i'll use this opportunity to say thank you very much for subscribing if you haven't this is an opportunity for you to subscribe and also turn on the notification bell icon so that when I post a video, you would be the first to know. So thank you very much. With that out of the way, let's get back to Excel. So here we are. So what we need to do, first of all, is to be able to break out the characters from each of these words. Okay, so we know what we are going to do. The simple construct is always to use the mid and the sequence function, right? So we can do a mid. We select the text here, right? And then we can create a sequence. The sequence is from one to the length of that string because you want to extract each of the characters. So if there are six characters, you need a sequence of one to six. So basically, you just feed this with the length of the string, okay? All right? And then you say you want to extract, you know, one character per time. This is the beautiful thing about dynamic arrays and spews. Now you can see the result, right? So A, C, R, O, S, S, okay? So now what we need to do is we need to sort this, okay? So we are just going to put a sort around it. So we're going to put a sort, and by default, it sorts in ascending order, meaning from A to Z in this case, okay? So you can see now that once we sorted, O now comes before R, as opposed to how it was before. Now we need to bring this back together again so that we can compare it with the original text. So how do we glue this back together? We simply use a concat. Whenever you want to glue without a delimiter, concat is your friend. Okay? So do a concat. So now concat tells us that, oh, this is across, you know, not across. So what we do is we will just compare this, you know, with the original text. Okay? And then anywhere we have, you know, true, we are interested in that. Anywhere we have false, we are not interested. So basically, you can see already the ones that, you know, give us true right and then we can use a filter you know to extract this but if you notice the way i wrote this formula basically i was writing it like in every cell right so i have it here i have it here i have it here but if you think about it it's really one formula for each of them the expression is the same the only thing that needs to change is that if you look at this one here now you see a4 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 when you come down here you have a5 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 so it's basically the same formula that just needs you know to change as the cell references change. So basically, I can use a map function for this. A map function will allow me to perform the same calculation, one calculation, you know, on multiple items. And the only thing that will be changing there will be the reference. Okay. So I'm just going to keep this, you know, in memory. So I'm just going to copy this, you know, and then start up with my map. Okay. So look at how that's going to look like. So I'm going to do a map. And then I select the cells here. These are the cells that I want to perform the operation on, which um, that's my array. Then I pull up a lambda. And then I pull up a variable. That variable at each point of the iteration will represent each of these elements. So it means the first time X is going to be across. The next time is going to be access. The next time curve and so on. So when you now have the X here, which is, you know, each cell at every point in time, what do you want to do with them? This is what you want to do. This expression here. That's the calculation you want to do and test. So for each of them, what's the result? But this wouldn't work the way it's written, right? Because this is customized to just A2. But you know that right now, A2 has been replaced by what? X. So X will be A2, then next time A3, then A4, and so on. So basically, I'm going to change all these A2s to X. Okay? So I'm just going to change this to X and change this to X. That's basically what I want. 
right? So now I can close, that closes the lambda, and now I can close the map. Okay, you see that the result is exactly similar to what I have here. The difference is that here, you know, if I delete one, I have to delete the others. Here, if I delete one, I delete everything because it's a spilled array. So once you have the false and the true, that's the perfect fit for the filter function. Because what you want to do is you want to filter A to, to A10, you know, where that criteria is met, meaning that the sorted string is the same as the original string. And now you have your true and false. So what do you do? You basically just pull up a filter here, right? And then say, yeah, okay? And you close this. So meaning that just give me the ones that return true, okay? And you can see the answers in here. Let me just take this out now. And you can see we have access, loop, abort, and who knows how to pronounce this? Maybe edgy loops. <laughs> okay, those are the only ones that meet the criteria. Okay, and in solving this, some of you may have felt that we needed to use maybe the lower function, right? Because this is in proper case, and you feel that we need to convert this to a lower case for the formula to work. Let's look at something quickly. So if you write here, say A, B, Let's do A, B, Z, and then A, B, let's say X. Okay, let's sort this and see what Excel does. Okay. So, once you sort that, one thing you see is that the A's come first, you know, before the B's, X, and Z. So, meaning that irrespective of whether it's an uppercase or lowercase, one thing that happens is that A, whether it is lower or upper, comes before B. Okay, so it means it wouldn't really matter in this case. So whether it's a capital A that starts it or a capital, you know, Z, the point is that it would always find it where it should be, irrespective of the case. So it's not a case of, you know, um, capital Z comes before, um, you know, small letter A. You can see that when you sort A's come before B's, before X, before Z. So for that reason, you don't need to do a lower in here and your formula expression still works. So if you like this video, you know, please hit the like button. You can also subscribe to the channel Excel Moments. For now, I'm out.